Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have John's very interesting blue-black storm deck versus Death and Taxes, which, you know, I think depending on your temperament, you either feel like this is a great matchup for Storm or a terrible matchup for Storm. Now, the reality is Storm can win before Death and Taxes does anything meaningful. However, if they do resolve something like Athalia, it can be very difficult to win, potentially costing an extra 10 or more mana to make your combo work. Swords to Plowshares is taken with a Duress, though Duress not likely to be super useful in this matchup at all. Mother of Runes now, off of Cavern of Souls. Cavern, one of the many non-basics in this mono white deck. You also have to watch out for Rashadden Port and Wasteland going after your opponent's mana is one of the hallmarks of the deck. That and Thalia. And looks like we've got five, six, seven, eight mana. Into Peer into the Abyss. And yeah, Luke really wanted to have a Thalia on turn two there. Mother of Rune's not nearly going to be as impactful as he is almost certainly dead right now. John's going to draw a ton of cards. He's still got mana floating, I believe. And from here, it's just going to be playing some either additional rituals or some of those zero casting gauze artifacts, Lotus Petal, Chrome Mox. We'll see if he has Mox Opal in there. Would not be shocking. It does have a lot of artifacts to support it already. Though it may not actually be worth the slot. Very often a deck like this will have at least the Lotus Petals. Very often the Lion's Eye Diamonds. Diamond playing so well. Of course with Infernal Tutor giving you Hellbent and all the mana you need. And Dark Ritual... I'm sorry. Is he going to discard? Oh, no. Oh, that's not where you want to be. Wow. That was apparently the bad half of his deck, as John draws literally half of his deck and then has to pass the turn. Now, Luke's hand wasn't particularly threatening, but now we have Sanctum Prelate on four, and I don't know if John can beat that. I mean, he's got to cast the Tendrils of Agony, in order to win, I'm pretty sure. I think he, that looks like a scooping motion. Yeah. That'll do. That'll do. Not going to beat a, a prelate at four game one. That is, that is one I'm glad we've got on camera. That is crazy. Drew half of his deck. Discards down to seven, says go, and then scoops to Sanctum Prelate. That is brutal. So John is going to have the play, which, you know, could potentially mean a uninterrupted win. He keeps a hand that opens up a basic island to go. Caracas for Luke. Expedition Flooded Strand. And, boy, I don't love the idea that Thalia could be coming down. I don't know how John's going to beat that. There she is. He's got a brainstorm in response. Hopefully for John, he has an answer to Thalia that can be fired off at instant speed. Something during Luke's end step, perhaps. I mean, I suppose just blowing it up on his turn is totally reasonable as well. But he's going to have to win while the shields are down, as Caracas can actually bounce this Thalia at any point. That it is untapped, making it pretty difficult to deal with her permanently. Aether Sworn Canonist. Things just getting worse. Now Luke does have a couple of 
planes on board, so who knows, maybe Massacre could be part of John's preparation? There are definitely cards in Magic that will get you out of this type of situation. We have a double fetch. People have been dealing with swarms of white weenie creatures from day one. Savannah Lions has been pestering people's life total. And they have printed a variety of cards that will actually answer them. I do not know what this magic card is. It's four mana tutoring up a massacre. So it was a three mana spell. Someone in the comments let me know there. But John has in fact tutored up a massacre. And he's going to be looking to fire this thing off when he's actually ready to follow through. Definitely do not want to just massacre and pass the turn because Caracas will be bouncing Thalia and she will be able to be replayed. Here's the massacre. Needs to pay the one. Of course, Thalia does go back as anticipated. So trading one for one with the candidates, but lowering the shield so John can try and win right now. Dark Ritual. Or I should say try and draw half of his deck. As we saw last time, he actually didn't win when drawing his entire deck. Playing a Duress. And there is a Mind Break Trap. Oh no, is there going to be multiple Mind Break Traps involved here? Yeah. <laughs> John's camera flickers out for a second there, perhaps from the trauma of realizing where this might be going. Cabal ritual. And now all of the lands tapping, sacking for mana, peer into the abyss. What does Luke have for him? Okay, it is resolving. So there was a Mind Break Trap. Duress did clear the way. That would have been devastating if there was multiple Mind Break Traps involved here. As John wouldn't be able to play around it. And now a bunch of fast mana. Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Underground Sea for turn. And more rituals hit the tabletop as John... Presumably we'll have a Tendrils at the end of this. Of course, if Luke did have another Mind Break Trap, it would have been used a long time ago. So, John picking up that game. Not in blazing fast fashion. I mean, he had to deal with the Thalia. You'd think that this fast wins would be his best chance, but there we saw Massacre being able to be tutored up and clear the board. Now, keep in mind, we haven't seen Aether Vial on the other side of the board here. Luke's opening has not been strong. If he can lead out with an Aether Vial, that will actually make cards like Massacre much, much worse as you can potentially bounce your Thalia with Caracas and then replay it thanks to your Aether Vial, or just have an extra Thalia if you don't have, for example, the Caracas to bounce it. I mean, you could just go ahead and use your other Thalia to replace her fallen sister, and you're ready to go again. Aether Vial just makes playing around this suite of creatures just that much more difficult. Also makes the removal really suspect. Things like Flicker Wisp can just make cards like Abrupt Decay feel comically bad. It says it can't be countered, but I assure you that is a lie. Alright, so I had to step away for a little bit there. I believe we're headed into game three. And Luke will have the play. John with an epic fumble game one. His deck totally betraying him game two. Things going according to plan. Massacre clearing the board. And he's pondering and keeping it, which is likely bad news for Luke. He does have the turn to Thalia. 
which is exactly what this deck wants to be doing. How will John answer this? There is a Plains on board, so Massacre can be live once he gets a Swamp in play. No Aether Vial, so Clearing Thalia will actually clear it. Lotus Petal paying one, stuck on one land. Not what you want to see. What you want to see even less than that would be a Rashadden port. Stoneforge Mystic. Perhaps even worse, also grabbing Sword of Fire and Ice, which is going to look to get some extra cards going. Dark Confidant, not a strong draw here. Hopefully it'll draw John out for his sakes as he's really facing down quite a dangerous board. Thalia turning sideways with that first strike walks right past Dark Confidant and during the end step for John expect that sort of fire and ice to hop in thanks to Stoneforge Mystic. Sword of Fire and Ice will also push Thalia outside of Massacre range when she's holding the sword. She'll have that three backside. That would be an absolute disaster. Fatal push. All right. Well, there we go. Fatal push takes out Thalia. Unfortunately, it's during the end of... John's turn, so if Luke has another Thalia, it can just come right back down. But Batter Skull hopping in, not the Sword of Fire and Ice. Which is interesting. I wonder I wonder if that's how you play that. You know, I don't think that's how I would have done that. So the the issue with fatally pushing during your own turn there is it's very likely that Sword of Fire and Ice gets put in to try and provide protection to Thalia. Now, it's possible that, you know, Luke would have just went with a Batter Skull plan anyways, but being able to respond to the Sword of Fire and Ice equip would be particularly devastating. Really just being a huge tempo sink. John is trying to draw out of this. Luckily... Pier is not going to kill him like Ad Nauseam would. Usually when you start getting below 10 life with an Ad Nauseam deck, you start to get pretty uncomfortable with your likelihood of winning. You really have to flip very well with Ad Nauseam. A lot of low casting cost cards with high impact, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Lion's Eye Diamond, and not too many of them. So Massacre here. Doesn't achieve a ton. Sword of Fire and Ice is put in. Boy, I think I actually just like the Dark Confidant as a chump blocker on Sword of Fire and Ice in this situation. Unless John's ready to win right now. He's got the Cabal Ritual. Oh, maybe it gave him Threshold. That would be very stylish. It may have. In which case, very nice. Okay, so we have a Peer, and it's being responded to with a Surgical Extraction. That's probably going to be okay. Tendrils already in hand. And we're going to lose Lotus Petals out of the deck, but that is probably not going to be enough to save Luke. I mean, the deck did fumble game one, so he can hope. It is very unlikely, it seems very unlikely, that the two life and the extra storm could end up being the deciding factor here.
John really just needs to get to four mana. And, you know, that's going to be Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual. Will he fumble again, or is this the end of the game? Reign of Filth, sacking all of his lands, and now Dark Ritual and Cabal Ritual. And from here, it's just however many spells he needs to play. He's already got that Massacre to start things off. Mox and Printing. And Luke sees the writing on the walls as the Tendrils comes down and closes out a very eventful match. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.